Okay. It's... Let's get rid of the white on here. How about that? Um... Brushes, brushes, so many brushes. Uh, let's see. Good size. Go for this. These uh, iron oxides dry so fast. The uh, transparent red iron oxide dries slower than the brown, but still dries pretty damn quick. Just mixing some transparent red iron oxide with some olive green uh, to get something a little more desaturated. I probably could have just squeezed out some like burnt umber or something, but whatever. I'm over burnt umber. Gonna mix some Gamsol with it, and uh, we'll see. Now that is so not desaturated, but that's okay. We can we can mix some more uh, stuff into it. By stuff, I mean more olive green. It's fine. It's fine. had a little too much coffee because my hands are all shaky. <laughs> Luckily, we're going to keep it loose. So it's okay. wipe some of this off because there's there's too much it's too dark for what I want I think maybe maybe might not be we'll see we shall see
Yeah, it might be, it might be a little dark for me, for what I want. Um, let's see here about getting some of this off. Also, by the way, anyone, uh, let me know if, hang on, let me make sure I have the, uh, the right chat. Okay, cool. Um, and alert, cool, all right. Uh, let me know if the sound is okay, if the music is too loud, too soft, if my voice is too loud or too soft. Let me know. Just getting a little bit of texture. But I'm gonna... I'm basing this uh, off of a pencil sketch I did. So I have my pencil sketch up on the screen. Um, So normally I would do like a pencil sketch first, but I kind of want to, I miss sort of doing these sketches directly in paint. Um, you know, and, and it's still very forgiving in paint, it just depends on how much you're willing to potentially repaint. Obviously, it's it's easier if you have some kind of reference to go off of. Whoa, 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 whoa. Sorry, I totally forgot to turn that. Turn that cell phone. Uno momento. Don't mind me. Let's turn that cell signal off. How about that? Only 
thing is, I'm gonna probably have to change her arm position a little bit because she's like holding up these two like hand axes, like hatchets, kind of like cocky look on her face. Actually, very similar to what I'd done for Bella Noir. <clears throat> but I did this one first, so I ripped myself off. What's up, bro? How you doing, man? How is your Sunday? Use your fingers, people. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I have. I've got my air conditioning going. I've got a fan blowing on me, on me, but mostly to keep the, uh, um, you know, blow the oil fumes away from me. got my air purifier going to, you know, do what little bit I can to keep as much of the toxicity out of the air as I can. This is the, um, uh, the Edge Pro, this is the Edge Pro paint book. Sorry, given the option between a, uh, wood easel and a metal easel, I will choose wood every time. I'm not that into the Stratas, to be honest. Like, I mean, they're fine. I just wish they would make, like, a wood version. The metal just feels so cold to me. I don't like it. I do not approve. <laughs> no, I'm sure they're fine, and I'd almost gotten one, but I was like, you know what? I have too many uh, Peshad boxes already. I 
really don't need another one. So, um, you know, I do, I do like the Stratas, but don't need one. Don't need one. Is the, uh, okay. Sorry, I just had to make sure that stream was fine. It hung up on my end. It might be because I have that going too. Sometimes I, I just push my internet to the max because I have a gigabyte connection. So I'm just like, oh, I can do anything and everything all at once. Holy fuck, seriously, dude? Fuck off. All right, this is annoying. Hang on, guys. Uh, do airplane mode. But I want the... Let's see if that'll do it. Eugene's going to sell travel easily that I could attach to a camera tripod. Um, this one attaches to a tri camera tripod. The one that I'm using right now. Um, I, I currently actually have it um, sitting between, like, in a Sienna Plain Air uh, canvas holder, but which which is attached to the tripod, but um, it has a quarter inch screw in the back of it, the edge gear does, um, that will fit on any tripod. There are a lot of them that'll do that though. You know, I have, I have the, um, I think it's the Blackfoot from Ala Prima Pashad. Uh, I have that one as well. That'll attach to a tripod. Um, I have the, at X, X Pro, or I don't know what it is. Anyway, all of mine will attach to a tripod. If you want uh, a little tiny, although they make bigger ones too, but the, um, I think I would shown this one at one point, but it is a little, a little Yugo which is pretty rad. It's, uh, this is, let's see, let's see here. Six by, just right about six by eight inches. This guy is, um, attaches to a tripod right there. Open it up. It's got this which works with magnets, right? You got your glass palette right there, which you can slide out. Which is pretty cool. Nice, nice little one. Um, which you can also get extra, extra trays for that fit on fit on either side, right, with magnets. So if you need a little more space for mixing or whatever, uh, pretty awesome. So like just in terms of, you know, going out and doing little studies, the Yugo, the Yugo is fucking rad, right? Cause just, cause it's tiny. Um, and that's pretty cool. Uh, they, they do make larger ones, but if you look for, you can probably do a Google search for the U go. Um, and I, I know they make larger ones, but because I already have the edge gear, the edge pro, uh, paint book, I didn't need a larger one. So I liked the, how tiny this one is.
But the edge gear is is probably my uh, my favorite. Yeah, they're not they're not cheap. Um, I don't remember what I had paid for it. Um, are you talking about the Yugo? Um, they're they're they aren't cheap. I, I don't think they're quite that much here. I don't think, but it's possible. I don't remember. I got it some time back. Yeah, and, and my philosophy is always that, like, if if the art equipment makes you want to use it, um, then it's worth it, you know? I can't tell you how often I've gone for, like, a cheaper version of something just because it was cheaper. Um, but, you know, we're, we're artists, we're aesthetic people, and, and if it doesn't match our aesthetics, or, like, if, it, if it's not, if we don't enjoy looking at it, right, why are we going to want to use it? And so I've often gone, you know, like, in the past I would go for something because it was more affordable, and I just wouldn't really use it. And it, so it was it was just kind of wasted. And then eventually I would break down and get the one I had initially wanted. Break down or, you know, get a job that, that paid more or whatever. Get into a position where I could afford it without worrying. Uh, and then I would use it all the time. And so that's where I learned. I was like, all right, you know, if, if I get something that makes me really want to use it often, then that's worth it to me. Since as artists, we need all the mileage we can get, right? I've really realized how similar my uh, Bella Noir pose and attitude was to this one. But that's okay. I don't mind. Seven string, huh? I don't think I've ever played a seven string. So is that like, I imagine you can kind of string it however you want, but is, is that to get essentially like a bass, a bass string in there? I'm assuming. Okay. Nice. Damn. Hey, huh? So 
she's got like, what is it, pauldrons on one shoulder. Oh yeah, yeah, you get those like heavy strings, right? And then they'll start to kind of fuck with things. Those super heavy ones. All right, it is Red Sonia, and I know typically one of her uh, signature features is giant boobs, but you know what? I just don't really like um, painting or drawing her that way. Once in a while, but... I don't know. I tend to like to go a little more athletic in that regard with her. <laughs> That's fair. I just remember like I had done I had done some stuff that they put in one of the uh, Red Sonia comics, some sketches and things. And um they had pointed out that they're like, well, one of her signature aspects is her large bust. So I actually like, because they were pencils, I actually just ended up taking them in, into Photoshop and <laughs> making them larger. Because I was like, you know what? I'm not gonna change the originals. I like them how they are. So. Which was funny to me, because if you look at the Red Sonia that Ben Caldwell does, um, I mean, I know she's supposed to be younger, I think she's like in high school or something, but, and he's done, you know, covers for the comic, and he doesn't ever draw her with large boobs. So... I was like, well, hey, dude, I'm partly going off of the covers that you guys have done. <laughs> so I don't, I don't see the problem here, homies. Do a chill one. We'll get back to you. There we go. There we go. Oh. Oh. Whoa. These finches are going crazy outside.
I know I had all these other paintings planned. I just, I, I wasn't quite in the mood to get into something more serious, you know? But now I feel like I totally could have. Because I have drawings on panels all ready to go. Oh, see, I always, um, uh, put something underneath the scale mail. You know, whether, like, either, I usually hint at some kind of, like, leather underneath, you know? Uh, so, like, along the edges and stuff, and then, and then I put the scale mail, like, on top of that. Because, yeah, I never... I, yeah, it seems like it would be uh, not fun. Not fun. bigger brush and get in some some more lighting here. green into into this just desat those shadows at some point I want to get uh, her red hair in there and I just I don't want the other stuff to get too warm or else I have to go like really red to get that hair to pop so I'm trying to control that a bit Too crazy. Too crazy. Filbert time. Filbert. So I'm using a, a Legion long filbert from Trekel. Um, this is a synthetic mongoose. 
and I've actually I've just grown to really love the synthetic mongoose, both from Trickell and um, uh, Rosemary. And with Rosemary, it's the Eclipse. Their uh, Eclipse line is is their synthetic mongoose, and I love I love both. I think they both do a really great job. Uh, it's a little softer than actual mongoose, but I kind of like that. It's not as soft as a sable, but it's not as hectic as a uh, bristle either. So it's kind of nice. You can get them online, yeah? I, I mean, I buy all my brushes online at this point. I don't... Uh, most art shops are only gonna carry the larger brands, you know? Um, I'm sure our shops that are near Rosemary carry theirs, but I've never seen them in the sh in the store. I just, I buy them online. I feel like most art stores, probably with a few exceptions, um, tend to carry, like even their expensive stuff is still like, middle of the road in a lot of ways, in my opinion. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong, I love Winsor Newton Series 7 brushes for watercolor, you know? Like, they're just, they're beautiful brushes, really well made. Um, I love Escoda brushes as well for watercolor. Um, but, like, my two favorite oil brush companies are Trakel and Rosemary. Trakel is, is more local down here, but again, I've never seen them in the stores. Um, but my, uh, a few of my friends are um, part of the pro art team at Trakel, right? Uh, Jeff Nentrup, Sonia Palencia, Sean Cheatham, uh, Nick Rungi, Natalia Fabia, they're all part of Trakel's pro team, which is cool. And I met the Trakel people, super nice. I haven't met the Rosemary people in person, though I've had some uh, communications with them. Actually, they had put one of my, uh, an older Red Sonia painting in their, um, I think it was like their newsletter or something like that, Rosemary did, which was kind of fun. <laughs> want this lighting to really be coming from. I'm going to have to figure that out. I always do upper left. In the sketch, it's really just top down. I might stick with that, actually. It's kind of fun. I don't mind it. I don't mind. No, again, the Rublev uh, stuff, I just order online. I, you know, I like, I don't know. I, I would rather get things I enjoy, you know, rather than even though I love going into art stores it just, they're probably not going to have most of what I want, you know? Um, like, linen panels, at least in the U.S., it's hard to find linen panels in an art store. You can find canvas panels, and then the linen panels you do find are rarely, like, a fine-weave linen, you know? 
and I prefer an, a really fine weave. Partly because I don't paint large, mostly because I don't have the time to paint large. <laughs> but, um, so then I don't want, you know, the, the thread count to be competing with, with uh, my brush marks. Yeah, I, uh, not gonna lie, I know some pretty badass artists. All super nice people, too. So that's, you know, that's an added bonus. Um, awesome artists, good people. Jeff and Sonia Nentrup are two of my best friends. I think uh, Kate, Kate also, right? Kate Zambrano, she's part of their pro team as well. She and Sean. Mr. Cheatham. Oh, Sean's a badass. Um, Sean's one of my favorite uh, portrait painters. He's just, he's so good. And I mean, not just portraits, right? Even even the more recent illustration stuff he's he's been doing is just fucking cool. Yo, what's up, CV Inks? I've never, I've actually never met uh, Brian. Um, I dig his work. I dig his work. Um, There, there's there are aspects of his stuff that I love and then other aspects where I'm not as into it but it has nothing to do with the quality it's purely a preference of texture and stuff like he's he's a badass there's no two ways about it um, he's really good and just not always my cup of tea um, I prefer a little more, tonally I like more texture and I like more grit and sometimes his stuff gets a little too like happy cheery colors for me. <laughs> um, I prefer a more muted palette but I mean his paint handling is, is fantastic and his range of subjects, you know, subject matter is fucking awesome. So. You know, I can't, I can't really say anything bad about his stuff, so. Thanks, CV Inks. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, I'm actually basing it on a pencil sketch I did, which I believe is in my book. I could not tell you which page it's on, but I know it's in there. this through a little bit. Um. 
are bugging me, so let's, uh, get rid of those. Sarah Oz, what's up? Nice. Yeah, that is one thing. I wish, uh, apartment complex had a pool that would be nice I almost moved into one that did but like I was I was in the process I was gonna be signing the papers and stuff but I wanted uh, my girlfriend to see it too and uh, and we happened to go there on a Saturday because before I had only gone there like before work during the week and uh, it was it was chill, it was nice, and we went there on a Saturday, and holy fuck, the place was so loud. I was like, oh, no way, no way. It's like some dude yelling at his mom, like, across the way, and someone else just blasting music, and the front windows of the place are those old school, like, slatted glass windows where you have the lever to open and close them. And so, like, they don't shut out anything. I was like, ah, oh, fuck no. Which is too bad because the interior had been renovated. I've just noticed that a lot of times people will renovate and they just won't touch the windows because obviously windows are expensive, but uh, it kind of sucks because then you're left with these like old windows before they were doing double pane glass and stuff. With like my current place, but my current place at least is not super fucking loud, so. Yeah, no, I'm really glad. I'm really glad that I caught that. The dude was pretty bummed that I uh, didn't end up doing it. He was, I think he was kind of stoked. Um, I'm blanking now what he did, but, uh, or I think he used to be in advertising or something. So I think he was kind of stoked, like, that I was in advertising and that I was an artist and was I should say that I'm in advertising and that I am an artist um, yeah he was and he was super nice guy I was, I was like I felt bad that I had kind of not intentionally strung him along but still ended up kind of stringing him along I felt bad about that but um, and he tried to you know, promise me, no, the place is, is quiet, I promise. I was like, dude, it so was not, and I just can't, uh, I can't do that, you know? <laughs> oh well, it's fine. <laughs> it was also, I remember, um, If it had had one more closet, um, I might have. Oh shit! Raid! Alessandro Padroni, welcome in. Welcome in. Welcome, my friends. Thank you for that raid. I was gonna start lightening stuff up, but I figure we can paint that in right now. We just want enough shadows to be able to paint around in. Alessandro Padroni, how are you doing? How was your stream and what were you working on? Would you like to share what you were working on? If so, we would like to see it. Um, 
For those that don't know me, my name is Daniel Landerman. Uh, I work in advertising as an illustrator and sketch artist um, by day. And then when I'm not doing that, I'm doing whatever the hell catches my fancy. Sorry, her eyes look really big right now, but that's sort of just catching the uh, the overall like dark shapes. It's not her actual eye shape and size. Thanks, we're kind of just, you know, sketching around and having some fun. Um, good times, good times. Alessandro, if you want a, a link, you, you're welcome to throw um, throw a link into the chat. Uh, if you want to show us what you were doing, um, if it's not somewhere you can link, you can totally throw your uh, Instagram or uh, you know website or whatever whatever in whatever you've got your socials, your art station. I don't know, I don't know wherever you post. Feel free, share your work, please. Uh, I do stay super busy, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, and on, like, to be fair, sometimes it's too much. Sometimes I have to kind of take a step back from something um, and, you know, because I start to realize like, okay, I have too many things going on and there is no way with working full time, there's no way I can do all of it, you know? Um, so. Cool, let's uh, Let's check your stuff out. Nice. Cool. So I see you're all you're all traditional as well. I love it. Right on. So, Alessandro, what what kind of stuff were you painting on on your stream? I see you have a lot of like kind of natural, uh, you know, nature subjects. Oh wait, I lost my reference here. Oh, okay. So have you changed your, um, your subject matter since then? <laughs> That's fair, Void Brush. That's fair. <laughs> 
I have to say though, I'm not a fan of Umber these days. I'm really not. I'm uh, I I'm preferring the newer uh, Iron Oxide pigments. Get some uh... I always find I I just prefer painting into the darks a bit, so I tend to make my uh, darks a bit uh, like heavier and larger than they're gonna be ultimately. Um... But not always as dark as they should be, so I feel like I should probably darken some of these a little bit. Because otherwise, I have to go higher with the lights, right? Much higher to get these to read as shadows, so... Mistake on my part. In a sense for me I would rather have my shadows get a little too dark because I can always um, paint back into them yeah. and I, I know you get some purists that are like oh never use any white to paint in shadows and I'm like whatever I don't care you know I think if you strictly adhere to certain schools of thought that makes sense you know if you're strictly going with like classical or baroque painting fine never use any white ever in the shadows but you know what if i need to lighten up shadows i'm gonna lighten them up Uh, yo, Naomi, what's up, dude? Welcome. Uh, Alessandro Oil. Uh, th this is oil. This is oil painting, if that's what you're asking. Yeah, good to see you. I know, I don't usually stream on a Sunday, but, um, I just... I too many little things to do yesterday and just uh, didn't quite have it together to actually um, stream yesterday. Naomi, how are you doing? doing digital painting or traditional painting? Do you do tra- I know you draw traditionally, Naomi. Do you do traditional painting ever? I feel like you must. Yes. <laughs> Well, Void, it's different when you're actually trying to, like, be productive and it's really hot, but if you're just going out to, like, enjoy, you know, to, like, chill, it's, uh, 
a lot easier to enjoy the sun that way. Right? Like I said, I'm going to go darker on the shadows knowing that I'm going to um, bring some lights into them. I just need room for those lights to be able to move around and lights and mid-tones and stuff. So. No, all good, Alessandro. I totally understand. Okay. Yeah, I. but Naomi, I feel like you have a great understanding of, of color and stuff. Uh, it seems like you could jump into traditional painting pretty easily, right? right. Don't worry, she's not going to look like she has mud on her face by the end. At least I hope not. By the way, this is me, like, basically just painting around uh, until I find some marks that I like, uh, especially in the shadows, and then I will do my best to basically not touch them again. So, um, that's why I'm not, I'm not worrying terribly if it, if it looks kind of messy right now, because when I get into the lights, it'll kind of clean it up a bit. You know, so yeah. into painting her face right now after some hydration. <clears throat> that is a small face, but I think we can stick with this filbert. It's fine. Hello, Ribka. How's it going? All right, let's see here. Let's see here. Um, I'm gonna go with cooler, um, a little cooler skin for her, I think. Um, At least in the in the lights, right? Do. I'm just not sure how cool. Maybe maybe we actually knock in some uh, mid tones first. Let's 
see. Holy crap. Birds are going nuts! <laughs> so this is more um, getting into some mid tones here, which will and then I, I tend to lay my lights on top of mid-tones. Some people don't. Some people tend to be a little more strict and keep the mid-tones within the mid-tone shapes. And, um, the lights in their own shapes. Uh, I think maybe I like to blend on the canvas a bit. Um, but that's why like these are for a minute, she'll look like she's a little sunburned. Depending on how you paint, sometimes you just, you have to do that. You have to keep in mind what your next steps are, knowing that it will change and for a little bit, you know, it's gonna be like, might be a little painful to look at. And, you know, can't I can't say whether that's the best approach. I think sometimes it's not, but sometimes it's fine. I love birds. Especially my little finches. They're so cute. Angry little bastards, but you know. <laughs> Territorial, I should say. Not necessarily angry. All right, that's good enough for now for this portion. So let's get uh, let's get some lights in there. Um, and go a little less red. Bring a little bit of a little bit more yellow into the skin tone. Um, And I'd like to do, I definitely like to do a bit of blending on the canvas. So this is where I'll start to also bring in kind of other colors into the skin tones. Um, I'll start to push push it around in terms of getting some yellows, getting some blues, greens, whatever I feel. 
it needs, but I feel like we still need to go darker on some of these shadows. Um, but let's also... She's Red Sonia, so I feel like we might want to get her hair in there. And then it's always a matter of, do I want to go with like realistic red hair or do I want to keep it fantasy where maybe, you know, the color could get pushed a little bit more. Um, and I kind of feel like pushing it a little bit. Because it's fun. I mean, I'm not gonna go like this red with it, but. Um, so let's. But I like the idea of almost like wine red kind of hair, maybe. Maybe. We'll see. I'm gonna get the darks in her hair first. So those will probably be a little more punched up um, saturation wise. And then I can. <laughs> well, but there won't be a lot of subsurface scattering because the lighting is basically top down. So there would be like no subsurface scattering. So. As fun as subsurface scattering is. is too easy it makes things too easy it's like instant drama <laughs> for instant drama just add rim light No, dude, I use rim light so much at work to the point where I like after a while I was like, okay, I have to stop using rim light. Like it's becoming my go-to. <laughs> so I've made it a point to like avoid it except where it like really makes sense in the uh, in the lighting scenario. You know? And if it doesn't, then no rim light. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's it's a little different when you're doing key art, right? Because you need, you it's not about narrative. It's all about composition, right? You need the art to read right away. You need it to have punch to pull people in, um, or they're seeing it on a billboard or in a bus shelter as they're driving by it, 
you know, 35 or 45 miles an hour or whatever, or on the freeway, right? So it's got to have a quick read. Um, can't really, like you can hide some stuff so people are digging for it, but you don't want to get too clever with that, right? So it's, it's a different scenario. trying to think of the light color i feel like red hair tends to catch a lot of cool in the highlights maybe but somewhere kind of in between <clears throat> like it'll catch cool in the highlights but in the lights themselves it'll often that's where a lot of the warmth will come in but because the highlight tends to be a reflection of the light source, right? So oftentimes if you have a blue sky above, that's, I, th I think we notice the cool because it's contrasted against the warmth of the hair, which is kind of fun. So I'm just trying to get some light here with some heat in it still. Interesting now how green the shadows look. Now that we've got some actual like more red in here.
to get those shadows. Definitely gonna have to get the shadows darker. get some accent shadows in here. debating how detailed I actually want to go with her. You know, like, do I actually want to get nostrils in, in terms of, like, that kind of detail? Or do I want to just play with shadow shapes? And I'm not entirely sure. Just yet. problem. Her face is not tilted as much as I have in the drawing, but it's a little late to change that unless I want to repaint the whole face, which I don't really want to right now, so it's fine. It's fine. We can run with this. I don't mind. The mid-tones don't look so mid-tony. Looking a little lighter than I want. So we gotta get some darker, darker mid-tones in there. Which probably means, uh, well, Probably need a bit more saturation in them, I think. I think.
Cryo coming in hot. Coming in hot. Massive raid. My friends. Hello. How's it going? Joyce, what's up, dude? How have you been? Don Lee. Cryo, what's up, dude? How are you? Thank you for that huge raid. Welcome, raiders. Um, my name is Daniel Landerman. If you don't know me, um, I work in advertising as a sketch artist and illustrator. And uh, I should reverse that. I should say illustrator and sketch artist because I've been doing more illustration than sketching these days. But whatever. Uh, that's what I do during the day. When I'm not working, I'm doing whatever the hell else I feel like doing. Today we're painting, doing some oils. Cryo, how are you doing? Welcome. How was your stream? And what were you working on today? Why does this look so red on stream? It does not look nearly that red in person. And Cryomera, did you have a good stream? Were you, uh, were you drawing or were you carving today? If anyone doesn't know Cryomera, uh, she's awesome. She does fantastic inks. She does awesome woodblock uh, carving and printing. Uh, super cool stuff. Go and check her out if you haven't already. If you haven't checked her out already, I don't know what the hell you've been doing. Living under a rock. Nice. That's awesome. That was kind of me yesterday. I had stuff I had to do, but it was like chill stuff. I was going to stream yesterday, but I was like, you know what? I kind of need to just take a day for myself and just get things done. But like in a chill way, you know? So I'm glad that you could have a nice chill weekend. Show weekends are important. Yeah. Okay, I might, I might switch to... Sometimes I hate switching to a smaller brush, but sometimes you kind of have to switch to a smaller brush. You know, depending on what you're trying to do. But also, depending on what you're trying to do, a smaller brush is not always the answer. So, who knows? Who knows? Right? Yes. I, I agree. I agree, Cryo. Um, it is okay to chill every now and then. 100. Whoa, raid. Another raid. Shane. What's up, bro? Cryo, did, did I say you can share whatever you are working on? If you want to share what you were doing on stream, of course, you are always welcome to do so. Um, I'd love to check it out. If you don't want to share, that's okay too. Sometimes we just want to chill and not deal. Not deal with, uh, you know, being overly social. Shane McKinnis, how are you doing, dude? Another, another awesome streamer. Shane, I believe, were you painting today? Is that what you were doing? Were you doing some uh, miniature painting? Or, or maybe not miniature, I don't know. Uh, 
Oh, right on. Ooh, you were building today. That's fun. Folks, if you don't know Shane, um, he is a fantastic uh, historian. Um, Shane, are you officially an archaeologist? Is that is that the deal, right? I think you are. Um, history teacher. He streams history knowledge here on Twitch, and it's fantastic. Um, if you haven't checked out his stream as well, go do it. Because he's super fun. <laughs> oh yeah, cryo, when it gets hot, holy crap, inking is just like, at least with a pen, with a dip pen, is like the worst. It just, nothing works the way it should. A giant pain in the ass. Trying to think, I, I'm already going cool with these highlights, so I think we're just we're gonna run with that, cause why not, right? Why not? I don't know why. In the last, I don't know, few years, I guess I've become a huge fan of cool highlights. I used to paint everything under warm light. Everything was like sunlight, all the time. Um, and lately I've become a big fan of, of cool highlights. I'm not entirely sure why, but, you know, it doesn't really matter either. You can, you can just run with that and see where it takes us. Oh. <laughs> Hello, Lumpy Dragon Potato. Hopefully the damage. I'm, I mean, we'll we'll see, right? We shall see. It's been ugh, for traveling, right? It just all this shit just sucks so much. I miss miss going places. Too too light there. Too light. Trying to get into the eyes just a little bit, but I want it subtle. I don't want to like, I don't want to paint hard lights in. That might be a little too subtle. So we 
turns back and forth, right? That's fine. We can at least bring darks back in. Not a problem. Okay, smaller brush it is. <laughs> Sometimes at least for eyes, you know, like I'm not trying to detail the shit out of the eyes, but um, I need, uh, you know, a little bit of, a little bit of something going on there. Also, guys, thanks for the follows. Sorry, I got caught up paying attention to this painting. Uh, the Damage, Oliver, Bubble Tea Bev, Shady1255, uh, Camel Drags, Nico Bites, Zephis Farger. Thank you all for the follows. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Try and not make her look cross-eyed. How about that? That's a fun game. All right. I still, I want to push her skin away a little more from the hair. Um, in terms of color, I'm just gonna bring, honestly, I'm just gonna bring some other colors in, just straight up. You know? And not worry terribly. Um, we can bring a little more yellow. We'll bring some more blues in there too, but at least for mid-tones, we can bring in some saturation but maybe try and keep it away from going too red off some of these shadows that'll help that'll help bringing some green kind of into the into the shadows should help separate it from the red of the hair you know a little bit of complementary colors always a good thing well usually a good thing I'm sure there are times we don't want that <laughs> That would be kind of funny if she was super cross-eyed. <laughs> uh, Shane, we, we haven't, you know, okay, so technically it's planned, right? Because we were going to go last year, um, but then it got canceled. So we're kind of waiting to see what happens with, like, we, we don't want to deal with going and having to get COVID tests, right? Um, and uh, hey, thanks for hanging out, Lumpy Dragon. Appreciate it. Good luck with your hum human chores. <laughs> uh, 
Um, Cause I know that part of the problem with some of the tests, like depending on where you're going and what's required, like you have to get a test within a certain amount of time of traveling. And there's no guarantee that you're going to get your test results back in time to travel. So it just makes the whole thing a giant pain in the ass. So I don't know what the requirements are um, for going to Crete. Um, so I'm not sure. But yeah, technically the trip is planned. Just not, and we even went so far as to get plane tickets for a day and then thought better of it because we still had no idea what would happen and what we didn't want to have happen is have another trip canceled and be stuck with uh you know airline credits for two different airlines that have to be used within a certain amount of time and it's like maybe we'll use them maybe we won't and it was just like you know it's too much too much money to risk doing that all right we're gonna go with I mean, she's a redhead, and I know Red Sonia is like out and about all the time, and maybe she's one of those like Italian redheads that can totally tan or something, but we're gonna go with light skin on her. Lighter than what we've got. Yeah, that's... Travel, travelers to Greece. Yeah, it's too... <laughs> Void, yeah, my... It's funny, my girlfriend actually can tan. She used to tan when she was younger and then is now paying for it with, you know, skin, good old skin cancer-y stuff. Um, but she does have some Italian, so she can tan, but I think she's got more Irish, so she should not tan. split in that hair. Yeah. Get this one going up a little. They're too even right now. Like too. Uh, they're the same length. So let's an exact same size, and that bothers me. And they're almost equidistant apart. So gotta push them, push them apart a little bit. I, you know, Void, I've actually burnt the tops of my feet before. Um, even though I'm, I'm half Indian, right? But I am only half Indian and the rest is all European. So I can definitely burn. I can tan, but I have to kind of build up slowly, you know, because I've gotten some gnarly sunburns before as well, you know. 
I just used to spend so much time in the sun that I didn't really... I didn't realize how easily I could burn. Now I'm inside all the time, so I don't... I don't... Uh, I don't really get to be tan these days. Even though my skin prefers being tan. It just feels better when I've had some sun. I gotta fine tune some of these shapes in her face. Get some, uh, get some darks in there. Just not sure how dark I wanna go. Let's see here. bit more red into those cheeks cuz I'm a sucker for that why not get those smile shapes going a little better there <laughs> yeah, Don Lee. It's funny because a lot of people assume that I that I don't burn, but I'm like, no, actually, even though my mom is from India, she's actually pretty fair skinned, you know. Um, so, and my dad was very fair-skinned, but I mean, somehow he did just fine in the sun. He would burn, but didn't ever deal with like any kind of skin cancer and stuff. He, I mean, he'd be on the tractor all day with no shirt on in the blazing sun. It didn't matter if it was a hundred degrees outside. And, and it just didn't seem to bother him. I don't know, I don't know why, I don't know how. Okay, I feel like this looks too, too light. But I'm always hesitant to try and adjust the exposure on stream, but let's see if we can figure this out. really look like it's gonna change. But it did a little. There we go. Darkened it. Colors look... no. Lightens it up again. Damn it. I 
hate that. Even with the exposure lock, it won't actually lock the exposure. Frustrating. Whatever. It looks a little better though now. Before it was just looking a little too crazy. So. Well, so it should do that when I bring in an actual white thing. The, the, it just, I don't have fine tuned controls. I'm using my phone to capture the art. Um, I know at some point I'm gonna break down and get another DSLR for it, but I'm trying not to do that right now. Cause that's a lot of money. I keep thinking, oh, next time I'll just swap and use my camera on me and use the DSLR on the art. Um, it's just kind of a pain in the ass to do that swap right now, so I haven't done it. Um, uh, but I suppose I will at some point. Basically, I try to make the setup for streaming as painless as possible so I don't have to like sit there and take, you know, half hour, 45 minutes just to set stuff up because then that makes it just kind of annoying and a greater chance of me um, not streaming. Because, you know, I'd rather spend that time doing other things than setting up equipment. So, um, but because I need the DSLR for Zoom meetings and stuff, um, you know, I can't, I can't always have it where I would be able to capture art, unfortunately. Unfortunately. She's got this kind of leather, like kind of goes around her, her neck and then on her, uh, the shoulder that has the pauldron on it, so. Almost like a half shrug. Aw, <laughs> oh, thanks, Cryo. I appreciate that, friend. The Sony ZV-1. What is that, Damage? I don't know if I've heard of that one. Uh, it's a good question, Don Lee. That is a good question. I could probably do that, huh? I like this solution. Let's try. I actually have this, uh... Yeah! That works better. Look at you getting all clever for me. I can dig it. I can dig it. Let's 
Let's, uh, before we start getting, like, too noodly on shit, let's get more of this painted. How about that? Oh, that's cool damage. Um, yeah, I was considering basically getting another Sony, but doing the A6100. Because right now I'm on the A6600. That's the camera that's on me. But, I mean, you know, that's an expensive camera. Whereas the A6100, you can get it used for half the price. You know, uh, I saw one used uh, that was in good condition for like... It's like 550 or something. Uh, of course, then you have to get a lens as well, because that was just the body. But, um, you know, it's that's reasonable, but still more than I really want to spend right now, because, you know, on one hand, I can justify it because I have a full-time job, right? But at the same time, I would literally not be using it for anything other than streaming, which I currently don't really do as a way to like legit make money right that's not um it's not in any way anywhere close to even like a secondary source of income for me so it's hard for me to really justify it even if i could afford it right i should say even if i can afford it which i can uh, i can't i can't justify it some color here. I'm looking for texture on this because once I get the lights in again, that'll smooth some stuff out. So, you know, just trying to give myself some kind of more interesting stuff to work on top of. And I tend to like to start out a bit thin with my with my paint and then sort of work up to maybe getting some more opaque marks in there. So uh, not unlike what I would do with watercolor and gouache. Good one, damage. Yeah, I'd have to look into the, that ZV-1. I, I doubt that it's better than the A6600, but uh, I don't necessarily need it to be either. So... I just need it to be better than my phone. And you know what's funny is even though like the resolution and stuff on the phones has gotten better on the iPhone, um, I feel like the camera itself is not as good because uh, it does too much too much of the thinking for you, right? Whereas it used to be that I could do white balance uh, and exposure and lock it and that shit would not change. Now, no matter what you do, it changes and makes all these minute adjustments. Even when you turn on the, 
exposure and focus lock. It still will sit there and, and fuck with the exposure as darker or lighter things move in and out. And I'm like, how the fuck is that an exposure lock if it's changing the uh, exposure on me? That doesn't make any sense. And yet everything I read online, no one seems to notice it. No one seems to care. I'm like, how do you guys not get super frustrated with this shit? Because I sure as hell do. All right, we need more lights. We need heavier lights as well. All right, so I almost never use cadmiums um, in like anything ever, but I am today. I'm using, I've got a cad red light and a cad yellow light, knowing that I wanted to get into some high value stuff and I want it to still retain, uh, you know, saturation. So, um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, Kason, what's up, dude? <laughs> yeah, I I generally because Honestly, I only put cad yellow light just in case because I typically use Indian yellow and Indian yellow has so much pigment that you can still mix a very high value yellow with it. It was more just kind of, um, I don't know. It's good to, you know, switch things up a little bit and see what you get. All right, I'm, I'm just mixing up some different valued lights here uh, and I want to have enough of it to get into the the figure um, Away, cryo. That's weird. Why did the uh, lurk thing not come up? It should. Whoa, there it is. Whoa, your lurk is showing, bro. <laughs> Cryo, thank you so much for that giant raid. I appreciate it. You know, I almost was going to stream on Picardo today because I, I wasn't sure. It, it all depended on what I was going to stream. But I was just kind of feeling like doing this Red Sonia piece, so... I was like, nah, then I can stream on Twitch. <laughs> and I do like me my filberts. Right?
Okay, so I think we might lighten up her face a little bit too. Like I said, I don't usually go, uh, or, uh, well, okay, no. Usually, <laughs> I get too light on stuff and I start running out of room to actually be able to squeeze pigments into the high value paint, right? Uh, Loco Nato, thanks for the follow. Mr. Joshua, thank you for the follow. Appreciate you guys. Um, but in this particular case, I feel like high, some high value in terms of tone, right? Light, light versus dark value, not like price. <laughs> um, I feel like some high value stuff will work. And what I might do is actually throw some paint on the background kind of around her and go light on that. Um, <clears throat> and if I go really light, then that'll kind of give me some room I think, to play with uh, everywhere else. Right, all this painting stuff is all about contrast. It's all about, I mean, realistically, relativity. <laughs> sort of. It's all relative, let's put it that way. Color is all relative. As is value, you know, lighting in general, lighting scenarios, high key, low key lighting. Um, all of that stuff tends to be fairly relative. All right, I gotta do something about some of these tones. It's gonna start to look dirty if I don't put some cleaner, cleaner tones in there cleaner colors. <laughs> yeah, Jenkins, fetch me my filberts. Um, I might get some actual color in those shadows and not just make them brown. Uh, give them a little, a little purer, a little more pure color. Or maybe at least just catch some, uh, some more kind of ambient light or something? I don't know. Let's see here. Try not to go too, too light on them. But I want to go cooler. The other thing I'm sometimes hesitant to do is too much bounce light, but I think we might kind of sneak some of that in. Um, just to get a sense of like ambient light bouncing around. So I'm kind of liking the cooler shadows more now. All right, cool, let's do that. Let's run with cooler shadows. 
Why not? And then we'll bring some uh, accents in, because that's one of the things I've kind of neglected. I shouldn't. I should not neglect my accent darks. As opposed to accent lights, which would be highlights, which are actually a good thing to neglect as long as you can. Um, otherwise, we often will have the tendency to start trying to paint around them, right? And there's such, like, finishing little details that it's not, not really a good idea to throw them in too early. lighter color in that background. Um, I'll probably do a mix. Uh, you know, like, we had done that thumbnail last stream, and we were looking at the um, Alexander Lewis Jacobs stuff and he was doing all that cool kind of impressionist mixing and I think maybe this might be a nice place to try that out. Um, so maybe we'll do a bit of optical blending in the background and just kind of play with like, you know, essentially simultaneous contrast at a high value. Um, cool. And, uh, so basically like same <clears throat> same value but different colors right at a pretty high value um, so I'm gonna mix up a nice pile of something light that I can kind of push around a little bit um, but maybe <clears throat> trying to decide what I want the majority to be, if I want it to be cool or warm or something in between. But let's, uh... Keep it very light. some of this off of my palette knife onto the background here. Um, yeah, fuck it. Let's do a little bit of palette knife work in the background. I mean, we'll still end up brushing stuff in, but, um, you know, it can... It's always a fun little uh, experiment, right? some kind of heavy, heavier marks in there. Estimate the power of a good hard angle. I 
I'm not gonna <clears throat> I'm not gonna chisel out all the form with this because I still want to uh, you know use a brush but it's fun can always come back in later too and do some of that my hands are just like shaking today and I don't know why. But it's kind of annoying. <laughs> like normally my hands are so steady. And I just feel like they've been shaking. Fucking with me. Um, okay, the other thing I, I kind of wanted... Oh, shit. So I kind of wanted to get a little bit of a color edge around her, but... Really know what color <sighs> I won't worry about it Five. Yo, Joby, how are you, my friend? How's things? How are you doing? Joby, you were probably on your podcast today, right? What, uh, what did y'all discuss? And welcome, Raiders. Friends, if you don't know Joby Dor, um, I don't know what you've been doing. Uh, fantastic artist, um, does a great podcast on Sundays at 2 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, usually has, you know, fellow artists on from various parts of the industry. Usually drop in some good info. Uh, he also does a fantastic art stream himself. And, uh... as one of the um, greatest uh, streamer voices you'll ever encounter. So, you know, there's that. This is one of my favorite things, by the way. I love chiseling out uh, edges. <laughs> Oh, nice. Nice. Yeah. I mean, hot topic, right? Um, uh, Hardcover 3 just wrapped up its uh, Kickstarter campaign today, um, which I had the honor of being part of. Love working on those books. It's a fun change of pace. Right on. Yeah, I have so many issues with the amount of censorship that that goes on um, you know people in fact I think I, I got in I mentioned it on uh, Instagram just because I posted for the hardcover campaign and um, you know just people 
forcing their own, their personal opinions and beliefs on something, uh, on everybody else, simply because they can, right? Simply because they're in a position to be able to do that. We're looking at you, Zuckerberg, um, among others. We won't talk about Twitch, but... Um, a link to, well, I had mentioned it on my Insta, which, let's see if I can reach, I didn't bring my stream deck close. Um, so I just posted, my, my most recent post on Instagram is a little crop of my, um, piece I did for Hardcover 3, and so I just kind of mentioned it in the, uh, in the comments because someone you know really liked the piece and and was very mentioned that they love those books because of the the freedom that the artists are given you know to to do to explore those not safe for work topic um right and just the fact that the whole point is to specifically do explicit stuff that we can't actually uh, post online. <laughs> I mean, theoretically, we could post it on Twitter, but Spiridon basically, he, he's like, you know, the whole point is kind of uh, sort of pushing back against the censorship on social media so we don't actually share the full pieces. Um, on social media. Oh, right on. Oh, that'll be great. Spiridon's awesome. He, um, so he's the one that, that put my book together. Um, you know, with, with, uh, Editions Corette. Uh, they're the ones kind of behind my my art book, um, and yeah, Spiridon has become a good friend in the last. Wow, well, I mean, we're getting into like two years now. It's crazy. Great dude. I love his books. He does a fantastic job. Joby. Well, th hey, man, thanks for the raid. Um, what time is it? 4.25. I'll be on for probably another hour. And then, uh, gotta run to girlfriend's place for dinner. So... For an early dinner, because she has to work. She has to get work done. I don't usually do a hard edge o across everything, and I might end up softening some of the edges on the rounder forms, but uh, for now, I'm actually kind of liking this sort of graphic designiness of this. Um, <clears throat> so. 
so we're just gonna keep keep rolling with this shit. Um, where is, what is that thumb doing? I don't know. I don't know. remember when my teachers, my painting teachers in school, kind of saying that as you add layers to your painting, it should be, uh, <laughs> um, Sorry, I got distracted by funny text messages. Um, <laughs> each layer of the painting, he said, should be essentially, it's like Swiss cheese, right? It should have holes that are kind of uh, letting you see through to the layers beneath it, right? And essentially we were talking about, uh, you know, how to uh, treat the painting versus the underpainting and, and all that stuff, right? Because if you're covering up every single thing you do previously, then what's the point in doing all that stuff previously? Now that's kind of a more modern way of thinking with painting, which is totally fine. Um, sort of, because also you could take the classical grisaille method and you could argue that you're seeing pretty much the entire underpainting, right? Because all you're doing is, is a super detailed underpainting and then just glazing in transparent colors over the top, uh, which is a fun way to go too. I don't quite have the patience for that. I still prefer a mix of like transparent and opaque painting, uh, but uh, it's still a fun, a fun method. Now, obviously, I don't really enjoy rendering the hell out of oil paintings at all. Um, so, naturally, like, you end up seeing a lot of my underpainting by the end. Uh, but that's okay. I'm, a, you know, I'm fine with that. <clears throat> um, Alright, now let's get... some other colors in here in the background I'm gonna need more more white I have no idea what all will come through on on stream might have to uh, like I don't know how much subtlety it'll pick up in that background but hopefully it'll pick up something um, Again, I mostly just kind of want to mess with like some simultaneous contrast and just sort of have these colors be, you know, the same value, just different colors in there, just to get a bit of, uh, just to get some of that optical blending and um, kind of more impressionistic kind of colors. And you can, I, yeah, you can see a little bit of that on stream. So that's cool. Um, 
And one of the things that simultaneous contrast does for you is it creates a little bit, a bit of vibration between the colors, especially if you can get two near complementary colors going. So this background is actually like a super light uh, kind of violet or lavender. And so I'm putting super light yellow um, into it to kind of help create a, a bit of, of life and movement in the color in something that might otherwise come off uh, a little flat, right? Hot tip here, if, uh, if you don't want people to question your level of finish, don't paint all the way out to the edges of the canvas. Gives you a lot more leeway to uh, keep the entire thing looser. For whatever reason, if you paint all the way out, it feels like now everything needs to be finished and, and clean and all that shit. Um, I never paint all the way out. To the edges. I mean, obviously the underpainting, but meaning I don't finish it out to the edges. And sometimes I will actually, I won't even let the underpainting go all the way out. Sometimes. It varies. got a bit of blue on this now it's kind of a green blue I mean it's essentially just manganese blue and white and then whatever other colors happen to be nearby <laughs> the uh, background. Can always add more colors if we want to later. Yo, what's up, dude? <laughs> Yeah, it's a warm one today. It's a warm one today. Thanks, man. Uh, no, not golden armor, because, you know, she's red Sonya. I just haven't painted the armor yet. That's all. This is just mostly underpainting. Um... And while I am, I am perfectly willing to, uh, you know, mess with aspects of Red Sonia. I can't bring myself to give her golden armor. That's just, uh, that's crazy talk. Um, we 
do need some accented darks though, so let's bring some of that shit in. Yeah, I mean, these days Red Sonia has kind of, like, taken on a life of her own. <clears throat> Was she even called Sonia in the, in the short stories? Didn't she have a different name? I'd like to um, at some point maybe do a, a painting of uh, Belit, the Pirate Queen. That would be fun. I had helped design a miniature for Privateer Press of Belit, and that was that was a fun little little exercise no no, couldn't couldn't do that for, you know, it was a miniature for Privateer Press, so that you know they gotta still be able to put it into production. Um, you know, gotta gotta make concessions somewhere. It was for their crate service, actually. Yeah, it was a special, it was a specialty thing for their crate service. Um, but she wasn't new. Do they do nudity in their crate service? Yeah, that's it, Avaparta. I remembered parts of that, but man, it's been so long since I've read the Conan stories. Uh, I have them. I think I have all of them, actually. Um, but it's been some years. All right, so let's get... Yes, Autumn, that was the one. Although, you know, they, uh, <sighs> you know, it's not perfect. They met, they, they did what they could. They did a pretty good job, all things considered. But the, uh, the face is not as, uh, as nice as I would have liked. <laughs> It was still fun though. It was a lot of fun to, to do that. But even like the art director had had told me, he's like, yeah, the the he's like the three D guys didn't really do justice to your drawings. But you know, it is what it is. I still I like the figure, right? And I actually have I haven't painted her, but 
Or did I did I give her to you, Autumn, or do I still have her? I don't remember. But the actual figure still looks pretty cool. The actual model. It's so tempting to start rendering some of this stuff. I'm just like, no, not yet. Not yet. Electric Monk, thanks for follow. Also, did I say Ricardo Imp? Thank you for the follow. <laughs> you know, you can cancel the crate service, right? Not my fault. Not my chair, not my problem. <laughs> uh, I want to, I do want to get into that armor. in there we gotta clean that up clean that shit up easy enough get some more pure colors in there I think I went a little too green on the underpainting and so as it started mixing with the with the reds and stuff with the skin tones, it uh, just started to kind of gray out. So, lesson learned. One of the dangers of doing a lot of blending on the canvas is that you can end up with some kind of muddier colors. Um, I, I kind of didn't plan ahead enough to avoid some of that, but that's okay. To, you know, whatever. Whatever. We're just having fun here. If we need to fix colors, we'll fix colors. Not a big deal. All 
All right, let's uh. Tackle some of that armor. How about that? Um, Like these scales got a little larger than I really want. So we're gonna make them, end up making them a little smaller. I'm not a huge fan of like the scale mail, but you know, for whatever reason, I kind of felt like being more true to the kind of current version of her, even though I prefer doing like, uh, I don't know, for lack of a better word, like coin coin mail, you know, kind of like Ben Caldwell does on his, where it's more of like a leather top, which I still basically have the scales over leather, um, but he basically does a leather top with different like round uh, metal kind of coins. And it just, to me, it just looks better than the actual silly scale mail she has, but whatever. We're, uh, we're running with with the scales. Cause why not? Sometimes it's more important to just like get something done rather than overthinking it, right? And so I'm I'm fine with Uh, by the way, I'm referencing a pencil sketch that I did a while back. Uh, so that's that's what I'm looking at on screen. Because even though it's black and white with some red in her hair, um, the lighting is all there. So... 
don't know if I, I'm sure I have it posted somewhere, but I couldn't tell you where. <clears throat> Might be on my art station, but I don't know. I did it a few years back, I think. Building up lights here. Also, she doesn't have this uh, in the original drawing. She doesn't have this scale mail, whatever it's called. Um, I don't. Even, I don't know what the term for this would be. I mean, it's kind of a skirt, but not really front of a skirt. <laughs> uh, she has, in the original drawing, I had gone with more of like a bikini bottom. But I was like, you know what, let's not do that. Grow up, Daniel.
I like some of the uh, underpainting that's showing through in parts, but I, I don't know. I'm not totally sold on, on all of this, you know? Like, feel like it, there's almost too much information where I would need to actually like really paint into there um, to kind of sell it so I feel like I kind of want to just blend some of that let it become a little more abstract I don't know, was, uh, it's another one of my constant struggles is like, you know, I'll start wanting to get information as I focus in on a certain spot. And, uh, but that doesn't necessar necessarily work the best for the painting, right? Like if I want it to kind of only have a certain amount of info, then I gotta, Kind of stick to that, stick to my guns, not go too crazy, spelling everything out. side is we can't really justify super dark shadows if we only have them in like one spot basically but that doesn't mean we have to paint a whole bunch of info into the shadows either right if we if we set up enough areas to kind of not have an abundance of information then it's fine course when we have everything warm gets a little tricky like her pauldrons you know I want those to read as, as being leather and different than her skin so let's uh maybe this will do it It's a little more yellow, and then when I get the uh, lights in there, and eh, we may go a little darker on this, actually. Maybe desat it a little. Diaz, thanks for the follow. Also gotta get these uh, axe handles in here. This one, of course, is just getting totally lost amongst all the leather, so I'll have to figure out how I want to separate that at some point. But not right now gonna be on for another like half hour or so um, you know we'll see we'll see so for the pauldron what I want to do actually is 
Also, I'm gonna go cooler on the lights, but I'm also, I'm not gonna go as hot in the lights. Like, I don't want as much separation between the lights and the darks. So, um, we'll see where this takes us. I'll do a little more than that though, I think. Eichmann, yo, what's up? Aw, oh, thanks, man. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, I'm actually... I'm pretty happy with where it's going. Um, I won't be able to finish it on stream, but I think I'll be able to finish it tonight. Like, when I get back from dinner... Because, you know, I'm not going for, like, super, super detailed stuff. I mean, you know, I rarely am, especially in oils. I know with digital, I always say, like, I'm not going to render the shit out of it, and then I go and render the shit out of it. Um, but with oils, <laughs> I don't do that. Um, so... Honestly, uh, Eichmann, it's, in this case, it's just painting around until I get it right. But that's also where sometimes you have to keep the broader picture in mind, right? So knowing that the tones were looking a certain way, I decided, okay, I'm gonna get something contrasting in the background. One, lightening the background. Two, you can see it on stream. This is like a super light lavender. We've got some complimentary yellow, a super light aqua in there. And one that kicked the saturation of those oranges down. Um, and then two, I've gone cooler on my highlights with her. Rather than going with warm highlights, I went desat on them. So that kind of like helps to tone things down a bit. Thank you. Yeah, I like, I, I never like to cover all that stuff up. Um, I always think it's such a shame to, to lose some nice direct brush marks, you know. And then I also always love to lose edges. So some of these edges on on these things, I like to, you know, blend 
Um, some of that stuff in. And let's get some, I think I do want some soft edges in here. Uh, I wasn't sure which ones I'd want to go softer on, um, but I do like to lose some of that stuff. Let's give a little more kind of form. Turning it a bit more. And then what we call uh, violating edges, right? Um, where you get some of the, these marks, like I always tend to do this, kind of cutting in, you know, in certain areas. Not everywhere, but some places. Yo, Vistro, what's up, dude? Yeah, Eichmann, I'm the same way. I like to see... I, I like to see the hand of the artist, you know? I don't... I don't want it all to be hidden. Granted, there are some pieces that sometimes when you see pictures of it, it looks more rendered than you might think, and then if you see it in person, you actually can see the marks. Um, uh, what's his name? David Kassin? Which I always thought was Kassan, but apparently it's Kassin, which just doesn't quite sound as cool and artsy, but whatever. <laughs> He's a good artist, and his stuff in person looks amazing. Um, less rendered than I thought, a lot more texture. Part of it is because the paintings are, are oftentimes actually pretty large, so when you see it online, it you know, it's all kind of condensed and uh, compacted into a much smaller piece, but um, a lot of his portraits will be like four or five feet tall, at least the ones that I saw. And um, they look amazing in person. Also, Kitsune Rogue, thanks for the follow. I didn't say that. I meant to and forgot. Thank you. Um, I keep wanting to put the highlights like on her nose and stuff, but I'm like, no, not yet, not yet. Um, but that is one area where I might want to figure it out a little more. The shape of her nose is still a little ambiguous, which on one hand is fine. I mean, you look at like Frazetta and how softly he would render that stuff. Um, but sometimes it gets a little too stylized if, if you keep it that way, which can work if that's what you want. But if it's not, then, you know, don't do it. <laughs> It's not so much the rendering as much as it is just uh, need to get some other, need to turn some of these forms a little more convincingly, but I don't have to do that with like soft rendering, right? Um, we can do that with 
uh, a little bit of pushing values and then also pushing temperature around. I've seen those, Eichmann. Yeah, NC Wyeth was so great. Uh, um, I mean, in the Brandywine school, I, I think my favorites have always been, you know, Howard Pyle and um, Harvey Dunn and Dean Cornwell. But I do, I do still love Wyeth. And Andrew Wyeth, man, he did some amazing stuff. With textures, like if you see any of his stuff in person, of the way he would use texture on paper, you know, doing that whole thing where, where you use the, um, what's that metal? Tool. It's like a needle with a small metal ball at the end that, that's used to like indent in paper. Uh, I forget what they're called, but using that kind of stuff to create actual like three-dimensional texture for highlights and all that shit. It was so cool looking. Um, all right, all right, we gotta try and get to some of these little tiny So, uh, um, Eichmann, the only, so the only thing is, as soon as you start adding bounce light, you know, reflected light and all that stuff into shadows, you start kind of pushing yourself into, uh, having to do a certain amount of detail. And I'm trying to avoid that. So I don't really want to get um, kind of bounce light underneath the nose. Ooh. I love getting into temperature shifts to turn form. It's one of my favorite things. Just like desatting something can turn it. I mean, obviously, depending on which way you're wanting to turn. But along the lines of <laughs> yeah, um, I mean, that's also the danger sometimes is taking it too far. So I'm trying very hard to avoid that. So, but the other thing along the lines of what you're saying is without adding more detail, I could still in theory add saturation which I know would be very hard to see on on stream but I'm gonna lighten it a little bit because it is a tad 
a tad dark in there. Um, but just to get a sense of light play. And then uh, the other side, the other thing is the um, shadow of the nose is too round, right? And it, it's kind of at odds with what we're seeing from her nose. And I, I don't want to fuck with it too much, but I think a little bit, a little bit is okay. about to be too light. I don't want to do that. to go and look for who we might raid. But I'd say for tonight, or for today, I'm okay with that. That's not bad for, what has it been? About three and a half hours. How long we spent on this so far. So I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. Who's on? A bunch of people are on.
Um. Hmm. Ooh. That damn ads. Ads are so annoying. Sims is going, doing his thing. Um, but first, before we bail, let's see about um, getting in here a little. I have no idea how the um, exposure and shit will change, but. Oh, yeah, that's not bad. Uh, so you guys can see a bit of the detail that we've gotten into here. Right. Loosening up as we get toward the bottom. Anyone have recommendations for who we should raid? <laughs> oh, it doesn't all turn to gold cryo, I promise. <laughs> uh, anyone have raid recommendations? Unless you want to raid a musician. Awesome, Kitsune. I look forward to it. Am I familiar with Geb's art? I'm not. Kirk Shannon. I always see Kirk Shannon pop up, but I don't actually follow Kirk Shannon, I realize. Oh, he's doing cool shit. I like that. Some Linebacker study in there, too. It's kind of fun. Fellow, uh... Why don't I follow Kirk Shannon? I don't know why I don't follow Kirk Shannon. Alright, let's do Kirk. Let's do Kirk Shannon. Give him a follow. And let's read Kirk Shannon. Right on. Thanks, Cryo, and thank you for the raid. I appreciate it. Um. <laughs> And uh, I will be back on tomorrow morning, I think, I hope. Um, and uh, I have no idea what I'll be doing, though. Not a clue. We'll see. Maybe some watercolor or something. Tomorrow morning, 8 a.m. Pacific time, we're going to do a little warm-up stream and see what happens. Uh, so thanks for hanging out, everybody. Appreciate it. Thanks for watching me slap paint on linen. I love doing it. So, awesome. All right, guys. We'll see y'all tomorrow. We're going to raid Kirk Shannon. Show him some love. Peace. Peace. <laughs>